party people we are off we're so ready riding. to go on another adventure guess who's on the boat today it's me it's me <laughs> getting some first experiences no already. i went under a bridge her first time under i'm under a bridge opening up her world we just went <laughs> under that she's used to driving over it yeah never going under it ever cruises are out oh princess uh, plan for today is to hit the wreck trek, perhaps get on a shipwreck and then hit a reef. Just saying hi because we're about to get it on. I'll see you under there. Even though the most common route is dropping onto the J. Scuddy shipwreck first and riding the current north, being the rebels that we are, we have dropped in on the Mercy Jesus shipwreck. As you can see, it is covered in a rich variety of marine life, including grunts, angelfish, parrotfish, and so on. Not much is known of the origins of this 90 foot long freighter, except that in 1998, it was seized for drug smuggling, then purposefully sank as an artificial reef later that same year. The hull offers a few penetration opportunities, such as the open cargo holes. The Fort Lauderdale Wreck Trek is a three wreck trek featuring the J. Scuddy, Tracy, and Mercy Jesus shipwrecks. Located just 1.3 miles offshore from Fort Lauderdale, approximately a 20 minute boat ride north of the Port Everglades Inlet. This is a very popular diving attraction due to its shallower depth and the proximity of the wrecks to one another. These wrecks were sank with about 200 feet of sand between them. When the currents are favorable, you can dive all three wrecks on one tank. Rebar stakes have been placed in the sand to assist with navigation between the wrecks. Still within sight of the first shipwreck, let's follow the stakes to the next one in line. Like the other shipwrecks that are part of the Broward County Artificial Reef Program, the Tracy was seized for drug trafficking by U.S. Customs. On March 2, 1999, this 131-foot freighter was sunk just about 200 feet north of the J. Scuddy and 200 feet south of the Mercy Jesus completing the famous Fort Lauderdale wreck trek. The wreck is also known as the Ken Vitale, as there is a plaque within the boat commemorating the beloved local scuba instructor. The Tracy provides divers with more than enough boat to explore on one single dive. The wheelhouse and midship platform is wide open and the overhead environment is suitable for even beginner divers. With the bow pointed north towards the Mercy Jesus and the stern sitting south towards the J. Scuddy, 
you could explore beyond the Tracy on one dive if the current is right. The rebars guide us from the Tracy to the southernmost portion of the Fort Lauderdale wreck trek. But first, I spot a mangrove snapper under the wreck. This is a difficult angle and I don't want to get my shaft jammed into the wreck. That'll do. Back to the trail. Here lies the J. Scuddy a 95-foot tugboat originally built in the Netherlands in 1961. The former tugboat was seized after being caught red-handed smuggling marijuana from port to port. Soon after, the Dutch boat was purchased by a local South Florida businessman and renamed to the J. Scuddy, in memory of his son. In 1986, the J. Scuddy was donated to the Broward County Artificial Reef Program and was sunk on September 19th to form the beginnings of the Fort Lauderdale Wreck Trek. The 95-foot vessel sits upright in the sand, approximately 70 feet below the surface. The J. Scuddy, Tracy, and Mercy Jesus shipwrecks all have their own unique history. But if you haven't noticed yet, they all have one thing in common. Each vessel was busted and seized due to drug trafficking. This wreck doesn't offer any penetration opportunities, but it does boast a variety of marine life. And it's the only one I found a lionfish hanging out on. Yes, that is a toilet.
Looks like JP found some lobster. It's a pretty tight squeeze and I can't quite reach. I'm a boarding mission. Time to send the catch for this dive up to the surface and get ready to end the dive. I got a little carried away there. Only one of those tubes need to be inflated. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Well, I was trying to get back down to the house. I was trying to get back down to the For our second dive, we'll be exploring a reef. This one will be a if you know, you know situation. The entrance is littered with concrete sandbags. It lets us know we are in the right place. JP spots a lionfish. Into the zookeeper it goes. Don't ever dive without gloves, especially when hunting. Do you have any idea how hard it is to pull back this pole spare without the proper hand protection? It's also hard to line up the pole spare. So I miss the lionfish with the pole spare and decide to nail it with the spare gun. I've nicked it, but it managed to slip away again. JP recovers the lionfish and into the zookeeper it goes. Take a look at these massive ledges. Broken reef with cliffs make good cover for marine life and is prime territory for lionfish. I am truly enjoying this location. Here go two more lionfish. Lionfish is a great fish to target. They have no natural predators in these waters and are truly unfazed by my presence. I have enough time to grab one and place it into the zookeeper while the other awaits a similar fate. I was just about to wrap up the dive when I saw this figure lying in the sand. Mm -hmm. 
Unfortunately for me, Grouper was out of season during the filming of this video. Back people we got some lionfish in the cooler one gray snapper probably like two lobster that last dive was really nice definitely have to go back there again about to get the boat cleaned up and i'll show you what's in the cooler Click the playlist above if you'd like to know more about lionfish. The video below is what YouTube thinks you would like best. Let's go on another dive. Stay salty my friends. <laughs> 